Lesson 10, Responding to Key Presses. To follow along with this lesson, you will need the project from Win32 Lesson 1. There are many properties associated with keyboard events, but at this time we will just present enough so that we can make use of the keyboard as a basic control. The message type that we will focus on is called WM key down, which occurs whenever a key on the keyboard is pressed down. WM key down events are ideal for creating game controllers as we will see in the coming lessons. WM key down can detect key presses for any key, even non-character keys like the arrow keys. These keys are the most useful keys for game controls and are located at the bottom of the keyboard just to the right of the main keypad. To respond to a left arrow key press, we can add this code to our Win32 Lesson 1 code inside of the WinProc function. Every time a key is pressed, a WM key down message is created and the virtual key code for the key that was pressed is passed in as the WParam parameter. Here we use a switch statement to branch based on which key was pressed. Our switch only handles key presses for one key's value and that is the left arrow key. When the left arrow key is pressed, a message box pops up to show that the event was handled. When we write our programs in the future, this message box call will be replaced by whatever message handling code we need in our program. For example, we might put code in it to move a spaceship to the left instead if we were writing a space game, for instance. VK left is the value used for the left arrow key, and the VK stands for virtual key since this is a virtual key code. If we right click VK left and left click go to definition in the pop-up menu, we see that the value of VK is 0x25. The 0x indicates that this is a hexadecimal value and it is equal to 37 in decimal. You don't need to be concerned about what the actual value is, but this file shows what names you can use to refer to other key presses such as insert, home, delete, and so on. If we execute this program, the window appears as usual and if we press the left arrow key, a message box pops up to indicate that we press the left arrow key. If we want to detect key presses for alphabetical characters, we must use the uppercase letter like this. This case statement will detect an X character key press whether or not the caps lock is on or the shift key is pressed. If we execute the program and press X, the message box pops up no matter whether it is upper or lower case. In order to be able to distinguish between upper and lower case letters, we need to put in a handler for a WM char message like this. WM char is another message type. These two cases of this switch statement distinguish between upper and lower case key presses for the A character. Executing our program and pressing the A without the shift or caps lock on pops up the message box for the lowercase a. If we press the shift key or the caps lock and press a, we get the message box for the uppercase letter. WM key down messages report when a key is pressed, however we will often want to know when a key press is released as well. To detect when a key is released, we create a WM key up message handler like this. This code block pops up a message box when the up arrow key is released. If we compile and execute this program, and then press the up arrow key, no message box appears. However, when we take our finger off the up arrow key, the message box appears. This event handling code is available on our Win32 Lesson 10 page at SOAX.net. You can copy it from that page and paste it into the Lesson 1 project code. This concludes the lesson.